fans were left with many unanswered questions after seeing The Phantom Menace, and one of such questions revolves around a fan favorite character none other than Yaddle. So if you would like to get all the much needed answers, then I've got some great news for you. Star Wars has now confirmed what happened to Yaddle after The Phantom Menace. Watch this video to the end to find out. What you need to know, Tales of the Jedi, the latest Star Wars animated series, explains what became of Yaddle, a figure that appeared in only Star Wars Episode I, The Phantom Menace. The appearance of Yaddle, another member of Yoda's species, in the first installment of George Lucas's prequel trilogy caught many by surprise. Yaddle was a member of the Jedi Council, yet inexplicably departed following The Phantom Menace, with no indication of her location other than her retirement from the Council. Yaddle's destiny has been a mystery since the original Star Wars, and until Tales of the Jedi came along, it had only been explained in Legends. Yaddle is killed in Episode 4 of Tales of the Jedi, which shows Count Dooku's final steps towards the dark side of the Force. Episode 4 of Tales of the Jedi, which takes place mere days after Qui-Gon Jinn's defeat by Darth Maul in The Phantom Menace, shows that it was actually Dooku who killed Yaddle at Darth Sidious's command. What happened to Yaddle in Star Wars canon and legends? Before Tales of the Jedi's canon confirmation, the only source that explained what happened to Yaddle was legends. Jedi Quest The Shadow Trap was the legend's story that explained this. This novel portrayed Yaddle on a mission alongside Obi-Wan Kenobi and Anakin Skywalker, in which she sacrifices herself to disable a bioweapon, saving the lives of millions. Yaddle Yaddle's death, however, never occurred, and her ultimate fate remained unknown because Disney classified this story as legends rather than canon to the genuine Star Wars narrative. Yaddle's death at Dooku's hands is not revealed until Episode 4 of Tales of the Jedi. Episode 4 of Tales of the Jedi reveals Dooku's full fall into the dark side, resolving yet another mystery from Attack of the Clones. This follows Episodes 2 and 3, which established Dooku's growing disillusionment with the Jedi Order. After having the names Sifo Dias and Kamino expunged from the Jedi archives, Dooku goes to see Sidious to question him about the death of his former Padawan, Qui-Gon Jinn. Yaddle, whose own departure from the Council was motivated by similar concerns about the Jedi Order, pursues Dooku and tries to win him over to the good side. Dooku kills Yaddle at Sidious's order after a brief combat, declaring that it is too late for him and completing his transformation into a Sith. What Dooku killing Yaddle means for his story. In Star Wars Episode 3, Revenge of the Sith, Anakin's murder of Mace Windu is compared to Dooku's murder of Yaddle. At this time, there is no turning back, and Dooku accepts Sidious as his master and the Sith ways wholeheartedly. In addition, Yaddle's death at Dooku's hands was unnoticed, as she vanished without a trace after the events of the Phantom Menace. Dooku has now defeated two members of Yoda's race, each of whom is rumored to be born with a preternatural affinity for the Force demonstrating his might and setting the stage for their last showdown on Geonosis in Attack of the Clones. One episode of Tales of the Jedi showcases all of this, and it does it with amazing efficiency, making a significant contribution to the larger Star Wars saga while still being very brief. Count Dooku's fall to the dark side began long before you realized. A closer look into Star Wars Tales of the Jedi reveals that Count Dooku's downfall may have started far sooner than anybody imagined, as has all always been the case with Star Wars, the new Star Wars Tales of the Jedi series will skip around in time. First glimpses of Ahsoka as a baby, Mace Windu, and even Dooku as he taught Qui-Gon Jinn as a Padawan were shown in the Tales of the Jedi teaser trailer. Previously, Kevin Scott's superb audiobook Dooku Jedi Lost investigated Dooku's past, revealing stunning parallels between his turn to the dark side and that of Anakin Skywalker. Dooku's attachment to Sereno and his birth family grew alongside his disillusionment with the Jedi Council after he unexpectedly reconnected with them as a teenager. More subsequent tie-ins have implied quietly that the Sith had been working to entice Dooku to the dark side for years before he eventually abandoned the Jedi. There's a chance Darth Plagueis even considered him to be Palpatine's apprentice in his absence. The Star Wars Tales of the Jedi teaser shows Dooku's descent into evil. It's telling that Han emphasizes the necessity for victory while discussing
discussing the Force with his Padawan, given that he already sees it as a means of establishing order in the galaxy. Dooku's definition of victory, if he indeed has one, is foreign to Jedi thought and a direct reference to the Sith Code. Peace is an illusion, it's just you and your passion. Passion is the source of my fortitude. As I grow stronger, so does my ability to use Force. I am victorious because of my ability to wield power. Thanks to the triumph, my bonds have been severed. My freedom is guaranteed by the power of the Force. Dooku appears to have been familiar with the Sith and their ancient code from the start. He had already begun his descent into darkness, and now he actively encouraged his pupil to follow in his footsteps. How did Count Dooku fall to the dark side? Dooku laments to the Jedi that he tried to warn them about the coming darkness in the Star Wars Tales of the Jedi trailer. It's another intriguing line that could provide some insight into what drove Dooku to the dark side in the first place. It is known that he is one of the few surviving Jedi who have researched the old prophecies of the Jedi, particularly the one about the arrival of the Chosen One. Dooku may have been looking into teachings that would eventually lead to the formation of the Sith, as these appear to precede the Jedi Rift that saw some members of the light side and others of the dark side. If he had noticed some of the predicted trends in his own time, his research would have taken on greater urgency, and he would have learned some very disastrous lessons. It's possible that this is why Yoda had banned the study of Jedi prophecies by the time of the prequels. Yoda warned that dwelling on such predictions could tempt one away from the light side of the push, and encourage them to want to force the future into their own image, rather than submitting to the will of the Force. Because of Dooku's history, he might have had to learn this the hard way. It's likely that Star Wars Tales of the Jedi will provide further details. Ryan Johnson's new Star Wars trilogy update sets up more disappointment. Despite the fact that Ryan Johnson's Star Wars trilogy has been confirmed publicly since 2017, it is still unknown whether or not the films will actually be made. The latest installment in Ryan Johnson's Star Wars trilogy is just setting the stage for further disillusionment. Johnson, who has an excellent working connection with Lucasfilm, suggested the idea for the trilogy in 2017, and the announcement was made at that time. Johnson and Disney first worked together on the sequel trilogy's second film, The Last Jedi, which is the eighth film in the Skywalker saga. The choice to give Ryan Johnson a trilogy set in the Star Wars universe was influenced by Kathleen Kennedy, president of Lucasfilm, saying that the company was immensely proud of what Johnson had created with The Last Jedi. However, progress on the trilogy slowed after the release of The Last Jedi and the ensuing polarized fan reception to the film. Despite widespread speculation throughout the years, Lucasfilm has never officially confirmed that the project was scrapped because of the mixed response to Johnson's film. What if Ryan Johnson had directed Skywalker's ascension in Star Wars? Both Johnson and Kennedy have been questioned several times if the trilogy will still take place in the years following 2017's announcement. Despite their continued optimism, the start of production on the trilogy has been once again pushed back due to Johnson's continued dedication to Netflix and the Knives Out franchise. In any case, the most recent news from Johnson may offer fans of the director and his Star Wars work more optimism about the possibility of a third film in the series really being made. Nonetheless, believing in the possibility of this occurring with a trilogy as tumultuous as this one seems like a definite way to be let down if it doesn't materialize. Well, there you have it, guys. Now you know exactly what happened to Yaddle after The Phantom Menace. So what do you think of the video? Did you enjoy watching it? If you did, why don't you give it a like and a share just so your pals can watch it too? And if you'd like to keep on getting more interesting content like this, then all you have to do is smash the subscribe and notification buttons. It'll only take you a few seconds. See you next time.